Hi there, let's get started. My name is Neil Stein. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm at Steinworks, and I use the same name on the Autodesk, HSM, and Fusion 360 forums. This is my first video, so bear with me. I even wrote myself a script that I'm probably going to look at a little too often. Uh, I wanted to start off with a technique I hadn't seen addressed yet that I have found, and I have to give a shout out to the end of the Siano for pointing me in the right direction when I needed it. Uh, this began when I saw a post on the Practical Machinist board asking for a simple tutorial on engraving using the fourth axis in Fusion 360, and I had to give it a shot. Uh, since wrapping is essentially taking 2D geometry and applying axis substitution for a rotary in place of a linear axis, I knew this could be done with a sketch and simplify the process of remodeling the text itself, which in Fusion, uh, although I haven't really tried it myself, I've seen other people do not, not a great job with. Uh, yet. Yeah. Hopefully that will be getting better. Um, anyway, what I've got here is just a simple cylinder, uh, tangent plane right here, and a sketch on the plane. Um, the tangent plane isn't really necessary, um, which I should be able to show later, but it does make it simpler to see what's going on in geometry selection. Um, so from here, um, all this is pretty simple. We're going to go straight into the cam and I'm always going to start with a new setup. Whatever you do, always start with setup. Uh, this causes, this fix a lot of your problems in the long run. Um, orientation, I always like Z and X or X and Y or whatever. I like to set my, my actual orientation. Uh, to simplify things a little bit, I'm going to make both the model body and the stock body the same. Um, you'll see why once we get into simulating the tool pads. Uh, after this, I'm going to go ahead and make a 2D contour. Uh, I'm going to choose a tool and select my contours. 30 second ball mill should be just fine for this. Contours, we're just going to go in and select all of our exploded text here. Doesn't really matter which direction the arrows are going at the moment, um, we'll, we'll take care of that. And as we're doing just sort of a functional trace, um, it's not really going to matter. If you had an open contour here, setting your tangential extension distance to zero is going to be pretty important, otherwise you're going to get funny marks all over your part. I'm going to go ahead and select the wrap tool path and use our outer face here as our cylinder. I mean, it's not going to leave the outside of anything, don't worry about it. Uh, moving on to the heights tab, wrap geometry, especially dealing with flat, uh, going from a sketch, is, acts a little differently. So we're going to set our stock top from our selection, the outside of our cylinder, and bottom height we need to set as a negative value. Uh, 10,000 should do fine here. We're going to want to do it from the same selected surface. Moving on to passes, I'm going to turn our compensation all the way off. Um, we just want to trace this right now, keep it simple, keep it easy. And then moving on to our linking tab, uh, we're going to turn all the linking settings off. Um, vertical lead-ins, extensions, things like that, uh, keeping the tool down can all gouge the part if you're not really careful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this an entry position because I like to do that. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and turn the part off, and we can see that the tool path does some really interesting things here. <clears throat> um, we can go ahead and simulate the part, and we'll see that the... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we'll see that the depth is good, but this really isn't what we want out of the toolpath. Um, obviously, the text is not doing its job, and the further we move down the cylinder, around the cylinder, the more it collapses upon itself and really just turns out pretty ugly. Um, this is where things get, get really interesting. Um, the only way to really go ahead and fix this is actually is going into our compare and edit dialog. Uh, there's a lot of options in here that you don't necessarily see, um, but it can be very useful when you're troubleshooting something that you know should work, but 
just doesn't seem to. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and filter for unwrapped geometry, and you'll see that its default is set to yes. So we're going to set that to no. So that's changed, we regenerate, and now it's starting to look much, much better. Oops. <clears throat> it took me time to think of the best way to wrap my head around exactly what happens here. Um, I noticed that it's now not paying any attention to my entry position. Um, but I think I've got a good explanation. When the wrap cylinder is unselected, the cam settings default to projecting that geometry onto a temporary plane where the curve is applied to the contour in order for it to flatten it into a linear geometry. When that happens to a flat contour, it kind of folds it up into a potato chip. Um, in this case, obviously, it only folds one end up into a potato chip, presumably because it picks uh, an entry point and unwraps uh, in one direction. Um, and so, of course, when that happens, it then flattens, or it, it applies the toolpath to the quote-unquote unwrapped geometry and then rewraps it around our part. Well, it was flat, and now we have a projective potato chip uh, onto our cylinder, which obviously wasn't what we wanted. So once we turn that off, uh, it should and no longer tries to unwrap it because there's nothing to unwrap and it applies the toolpath correctly. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, apologize for all my ums. Like I said, I'm pretty new to this. Uh, in the future, I would like to be making more of these sorts of videos. Uh, if anyone out there has something they want to see, either in their model, they can send it to me, um, invite me to a project, whatever you want, um, or on a dummy part, um, then uh, please let me know, and I'd be glad to help. Uh, feel free to send me messages via Gmail, the, the same as my YouTube account here. Uh, Instagram works also, as well as the Autodesk forums that I check on a pretty regular basis, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers.